with the gallery, we didn't work by accepting submissions from artists, which is really tough. I, I do realize we, um, a lot of galleries do offer submissions, and I think that's, that's a really fair and great thing. So definitely keep your eyes out for galleries that accept online uh, submissions. Um, we happened at the time to work quite specifically through our own personal research of traveling, uh, fairs, exhibitions, and also, as I mentioned earlier, Paul Womble, a curator. So curators, not just him, but many other curators are a great source of, of information for, for, for you know, sourcing new artists. So I would, I would urge you to sort of befriend and, and get yourself out there and network and really understand who the curators in your, net, in your networks and your, and your communities are. Because I think, I think, I don't know if you'd agree, but it's, yeah. it's, an, it's an interesting <laughs> um, element to, to approach, definitely. As an advisor, it's a slightly different game. I'm working specifically with an, uh, a client's interests in mind, and those can vary so wildly. So um, I, I do just a lot of research of all sorts of different artists from emerging to established. Uh, I keep them on file. And um, yeah, so um, I think it's sometimes directly through artists, which is interesting. And that could be my research through seeing them in open studios or um, online too, just through Instagram. Uh, but it also it, it could be um, directly through galleries as that often happens. Yeah, yeah. And then now with the more recent project, it's it's uh, emerging artist centric. So looking at recent graduates, open studios, and and nowadays Instagram, you can't ignore. Yeah. On to on to Melanie. So Melanie, yeah. So how how do you select artists for the exhibitions you cur curate, or maybe give us one or two examples of how you've come across them and met yeah, them? Yeah. So many of the um, ways in which they've already been mentioned. Uh, through um, exhibitions and through um, studio visits and open studios, we go to a lot of open studios, graduate shows. Um, but for exhibitions, it's a little bit different because there will already be an exhibition concept and there I'm looking for artists that fit that concept. So prizes like this are fantastic opportunities for me, selfishly, because it enables me to see lots of different work which doesn't have any parameters. Everyone's working in many different ways and they're not restricted by trying to like squeeze them into a particular idea for a sh for a show, so um, I think a lot of uh, ways in which I meet artists, some is through prizes. I do regularly check who who's won different prizes um, and personal recommendations. So I have like I'm part of different curatorial expertise groups where we talk about different things that we've been to and different artists that excite us. And we all go home and like write down the same names and then go and so word of mouth is a big thing. Um, increasingly, I spend a lot of time online. I will check people's websites to see what they're doing, um, magazines and interviews, um, blogs, personal blogs as well. Um, sometimes it can be quite hard to necessarily get yourself um, written about. Um, so it's maybe finding um, a, somebody that you know who's good at writing or yourself you're good at writing. Are often people take the initiative on themselves, whether that's to host their own exhibition in whichever shape or form, um, like. Um, Open studios I've seen done really interestingly, not necessarily just always through galleries, but in unusual spaces. Um, and equally, it's easier these days to self-publish. So that's primarily the different forms through which I come into contact with 